everybody, it's Rebecca, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the history of tea bags. I'm always talking about how much I love loose leaf over tea bags, but I never really dug into what are tea bags and where do they originate from. Today, tea bags make up 95% of all tea sales in the United States. Ironically, these tea bags contain the cheapest tea available. One way to see this is in your brewed tea. A good premium quality tea will be a golden jewel-like color, it'll be very shiny, while most tea bags produce a brown, flat color. Because the cheapest tea available is used in top selling brands and is the popular standard, it's not surprising while tea's popularity has faded rather quickly. Tea bags are actually a relatively new invention. For thousands of years, tea was enjoyed loose leaf with a variety of different ways to extract the tea leaves from the water. Thomas Sullivan, a tea and coffee merchant in New York City, tried to cut sampling costs by sending his loose leaf tea in little hand-sewn silk pouches instead of the very costly metal tins. Potential clients were really confused about this new packaging, so they just simply threw the tea in hot water, bag and all. Thomas started getting hundreds of requests for these tea bags, and he realized that he had struck gold. The quick and easy cleanup of the leaves, since they were all contained in the silk pouches, made it enticingly convenient. Tea bags first began appearing commercially in 1904 and quickly shipped all around the world. Unfortunately, this convenience came at a very precious cost. Flavor. Tea leaves require a lot of room to expand and the tea bags restrict that. Because the tea had significantly less room to expand, the quality dropped. This resulted in Thomas putting in smaller leaves, which required less room to expand. Because they were hidden behind a silk screen, there was little concern drawn to this. This decision started the very slippery, slippery slope of tea. Because size no longer mattered, merchants started purchasing cheaper grades of tea, such called fannings or dust. Fannings and dust are the lowest rankings of tea available. In that period, you would find your fannings or dust at the bottom of the tea barrels. Today, you would find them at the bottom of factory machinery. This so-called tea will add color to your hot water, but hardly any flavor or health benefits. After this, companies started replacing the hand-sewn silk bags with paper filters. Paper filters are obviously a much cheaper alternative, but it didn't allow the water to flow through it quite as easily. This resulted in can you guess? Lower quality. This standard of tea has affected the West for several decades. Most supermarkets only offer bottom of the barrel tea products. This leaves consumers thinking that these are the only options available when it comes to tea. Thankfully, this is a far cry from the abundance of the flavors and intoxicating aromas that there are in the tea world. This is one of the reasons I started Tea Cups and Blossoms. I wanted to spread the word and teach people about the vast unknowns of this amazing tea world. Tea vendors today have been brainstorming a way to tackle this problem, but also maintaining the convenience of the beloved tea bag. One way was to produce larger leaves and larger bags. Modern technology has allowed vendors to use a higher quality bag, allowing for more water to flow through, which results in a more flavorful cup. Reasons I don't drink tea bags often, excluding the reasons that I've already mentioned before, mostly have to do with the packaging. The cardboard boxes and paper filters offer no protection from air, moisture, light, protruding scents, and flavors. Because it offers no protection, your tea is exposed almost its entire journey to your kitchen counter. And so the quality is depleted really, really quickly and is not gonna taste how it was originally intended to. Many people drink tea because of its health benefits and they turn to tea bags because it's super easy and it's cheap, It's a, obviously it's affordable and you can get it almost at any grocery store or gas station. But tea bags have little to absolutely no health benefits because of the lack of quality and protection. It's kind of like your fruits and vegetables. Your fruits and vegetables are the most nutritious the day that you pick the fruit and they go slightly decrease in their nutritional value the longer you wait to consume them. 
tea is exactly the same way in that the only the freshest and highest quality of tea will have the most flavor, aroma, and health benefits. Overall, I love tea bags because they're super convenient and the packaging is really cute but it kind of stops there. To me, they're just not worth the money or the time, and I hardly ever find a tea bag that, like from the grocery store, that I really enjoy the flavor of. If you want convenience, you can buy disposable tea filters for your loose leaf tea. Or, if you want the convenience and you also want to help the environment, you can also do a reusable tea steeper. It's way easier than you may think to ditch the bags and let it loose. <laughs> So there you have it, the basics into how tea bags came to be. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If there's anything that I left out, any questions you may have, just let me know down in the comments. I hope your day is filled with tea and happiness, and I will see you next time. Bye!